What's up guys, it's Ivan. In this video I wanted to talk to you about magic pops. What they are, why you would use them, and basically how to set it up, okay, on Click Magic. So <clears throat> what magic pops are, they're basically pop-ups that you set up in uh, Click Magic, okay? And the reason why you would want to do it here is twofold, two really big reasons that I've determined. One is if you're an affiliate marketer and you are advertising these affiliate links and these affiliate websites, if you, um, if people click on your affiliate link, right, which you mask using Click Magic, and they go to that page, you would want to gather information such as their email or their name, so you could remarket to them later on. Without this magic pop, that's something you can't really do because if they go, if the if the people go to a page that you're advertising that's not under your control. How are you going to collect emails? You can't. So what this awesome magic pop feature allows you to do is it allows you to put a pop-up on a page you do not control, especially useful if you're an affiliate marketer and you're selling products on that page, right? Because then when people buy or before they buy, they can subscribe, possibly, right? Depending on what you put. Uh, so that's one. The second thing is this is just a secondary pop-up that you can use. Some software such as ClickFunnels, they only have one pop-up that you can do within the system. Anything more than that, you're going to need to use third-party tools and add-ons such as MailChimp or ClickMagic, okay? So uh, let me just show you where to go, how to install it, and what the easiest way to, to put that pop-up in. in. And, and I'll actually show you how you can put it on any website as long as that website allows cloaking, okay? So... What we're going to do is log into your page, go to content, and click on Magic Pops. So we're going to click on Create New Pop, or the top right there. And now we can enter a name, so let's say Test Pop-Up. Uh, you can input the dimensions of this pop-up. So I would keep this blank for now, and I'll tell you why in a bit. Uh, for timing, so you can customize when you want this pop-up to... Uh, show up so you can have the pop-up show up immediately on the load you can have it show up after a certain amount of seconds you can have it um, show up when people exit so not when people exit when they're about to exit so if, if people are scrolling for example to the top of their um, you know all these URL bars and they're about to exit it's going to detect that you're somewhere in this exit area and it's going to create this pop-up. So something pretty cool. Exit redirect, I think that one is if um, here. So it can be used like one to the URL you've entered once they attempt to leave the page. So this basically redirects you after they leave the page, it redirects them to this pop-up, okay? Um, which you can use to gather uh, information as well. So that's pretty cool. So let me go back to that, okay. So closable, is your pop-up closable? I would recommend so. If you say no, you're kind of forcing them to leave the page or input their information, but people don't like to be forced, right? So I would recommend it to be closable, to have that option to close it. If you really want to gather their information, no matter the cost, you can say no, okay? Uh, that's an option for you to determine. This cookie duration, that's basically how long will it take until the person gets this pop-up again. So if it's 60 minutes, then if someone goes to the web page that you have this pop-up on and they come back in 50 minutes, they will not see the pop-up again. They will not because that cookie is saved for 60 minutes. Uh, so for testing purposes, I would maybe recommend keeping it at one minute uh, while you're testing it out and then changing it to whatever you see fit. Like maybe 60 minutes is okay, maybe like half a day. Whatever it is, basically, we don't want to spam people every single time they click on that site. The same person clicks on the site. We don't want to spam them with these constant pop-ups 24-7, right? So I'll just say one minute while we're testing. Uh, here you can put a URL of, a, of an existing page that you want to redirect them. For example, here, exit redirect, which in that case, you would have to kind of create your own page. So pop-up isn't as beneficial. Um, or create your pop-up content below in the editor, okay? So in this case, we're doing our pop-up on load, for example. Actually, let's do intelligent exit just so I can show you what it's going to look like. And here, you can create it yourself. Um, there are some forms here, right? There's text field, uh, text area. But you really would need a pop-up created from another software with the HTML code so that when they enter their email, that email goes to a certain campaign, right? And we'll be using GetResponse. 
So I'll actually show you how you can quickly and easily make your own pop-up and get response and plug it in here. Because uh, otherwise, it's it's going to be a pain in the butt in making your own and kind of you won't be able to uh, integrate this with your autoresponder software, right? Uh, but basically, yes, you can make your own stuff here. And we'll go over that later when we go over uh, magic bars, okay? But um, here's the source code. So here's the HTML. So if you want to create your own pop-up, if you're a professional programmer, just go to source and, you know, put your own stuff here in between the body text or whatever it is. Um, but what I really would recommend is going to get response. So that's the software we've been using. So if you have any questions about get response and what it is, check out these videos. Uh, I show you how to make your autoresponders, how to make your campaigns and stuff like that. Then what I'm going to go is I'm going to go to create form. Uh, I'm not going to go too in depth into, into this, but I'll just show you roughly the basics that you need, right? So select a template. There's, there's literally like, look at this, look at the scroll here at the bottom. There's, there's like 500 different options you can have, okay? So uh, pick whatever you want. I'm gonna go, um, yeah, but there's, there's, there's literally a ton, right? So, so pick whatever suits your uh, affiliate product. Uh, I'll pick something simple. I'll go with a, you know, very first one I see. I'm gonna click edit template. And then here's your template, you edit it, right? So this, if you wanna change that, for example, email address, you go to layout. Um, and you type here whatever you want. So type email hither, okay? <laughs> you can increase the size, play around with it, increase the size I think is there, okay? So that's the font size, and that is the size of the box. Uh, you can move the box wherever you want. You can make the box bigger. Um, so I, I don't think you can increase the, the actual yeah, so so that's the only way how you can increase the height of the box. Um, yeah, there's your basic font. So play around with this um, stuff like that. You can you can add stuff too. So remember how um, in our um, get response tutorial on the automation workflow, which you can see over here, we talked about all these different pieces of data that normally aren't available. Well, you can add them to your form. So you can say you know we need we need your date, we need your birth. Or, Sorry, we need your name, we need your birth date, and we need your address, whatever, right? So add it here, well, assuming there's space, okay? And if you want to expand this box, just expand it like that and maybe move everything back, right? So play around with it. It's, it's pretty simple. I mean, everything's there. It's self-explanatory. Um, but yeah, so after we do this, you also, by the way, have an option. There's a thank you page there, which you would have to update as well. And you could also create um, an A-B test for your for these forms as well, okay? So you would have to click here and variant B and play around with this, okay? So in variant A, uh, it says that. Maybe variant B, we're gonna say, hi, how are you doing today? Okay, so that looks pretty professional. So this one may, may look better, just kidding, by the way. But, <laughs> um, you know, that's your variant B, okay? So after we do that, we're gonna click save and publish. Um, yeah, save and publish. By the way, if you have any questions about any of this, feel free to leave your comments down below. I'll be, uh, I'll, I'll be able to answer. Um, and that's it, okay? So you're given this code. So this code already includes that A-B split test and it includes the thank you page. So I'm going to copy that code. I will go back to my pop-ups. Why do I have two windows open? Hmm. Okay, I'm just gonna close one. Um, I'm gonna go back to source. Right, okay. And I'm going to paste it in between the body, the, the you know, triangle brackets body and triangle brackets forward slash body. Okay, I'm gonna paste it there, copy paste. And if you wanna preview what it looks like, you just click uh, preview content. Oh, we need to, okay. So I told you I'm gonna go back to the height and width um, of this, okay, magic pop. Yes, so here's why, okay. By the way, let me say test again, intelligent exit. Uh, so here's why I said that is because we need to see uh, how big our pop-up is, okay? We don't want to create a pop-up that's huge and then make the dimension small. We want to make it even. So I'm going to go back to form creator. So I'm going to go back to this page. And here's a way to determine how big your pop-up is. You just click here, but don't expand it. So just hold, just left click and hold it here. And it's going to tell you there it's 768 by 712, okay? So your width is 768, your height is 712 pixels. So let's put in 768, 712. 
Okay, so now that that's done, we can click preview content and we can see what it looks like. We may need to do it a little bit bigger. Oh, no, that one looks pretty small. Let me see. How come? Okay, so let's see. Something we did not do properly because it looks like it's too small, right? Percentage. Ah, it's probably because we got variant B. No. Uh, let me see. 768, 712, right? Okay, it worked that time. So I, I, I don't know what it was the first time, but uh, it works fine now. Yeah, I was going to say we may need to do it a little bit bigger to avoid these scrolls, okay? So I will make it just to be safe, like maybe 780 by 720. I'll preview content. And that's what it's going to look like. It still has that scroll, so let's make it even a bit bigger. 790 by 730. Preview content. Okay, there you go. No more scroll, okay? So there you go. Um, you can set what you want to be required or not. So back in here, um, if I go to my email and I go... Let me see where it was layout there's an option to say whether it's required or not here uh field is required okay so whatever parts you want uh to be necessary for them to go to the next part make sure it says field is required so for me personally i just like to keep email required i don't like to force people to enter anything else other than that i don't want that to get in the way uh, but that's totally up to you you know if you want really much more serious customers maybe you'd want to make it required to eliminate those people that aren't serious right totally up to you uh so that's basically that and then yeah it's 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 gonna be ready here uh so then you would click click uh, create pop-up so uh now what we need to do is we need to put it on a page that allows cloaking okay so some pages don't allow cloaking. I think it's something to do with like SEO. It has different information. Um, the the information that is presented about the site is different in, in SEO in the uh, search engines. Um, so, so sometimes don't allow that because there is a discrepancy, right? So let me just show you. So here's our diabetes. So I'm going to create a new link under this diabetes plan as well. Uh, link group. Okay, yeah, that was the test group. And I'll say test pop up. And let's make, uh, you know, let's make this our, let's make our ID test pop up. So I just want to show you on a, on any affiliate link, you will most likely be able to use this. Uh, so let's just go to Google. Let's say, what do you guys want? Yeah, um, let's say top dog trainers. I don't know. Everyone seems to like dogs and animals and whatever. Uh, I don't want them to. Okay, so let's pick this one, for example. So we'll know if they allow cloaking or not by actually putting it in and testing it out, seeing if it's going to work. Okay, so I'm just going to copy this URL, for example. Suppose, imagine that's my affiliate link, okay? Uh, I'm going to paste it here. I'm going to say test pop-up. Now what we need to do is I need to say, yes, cloak, okay? That is necessary. And then I'm going to go to show advanced settings. I will go to pop-up, test. So select the pop-up that we've just created. Click on create linky link, and there you go, it is done. So the best way to test this is to actually click on this. So that's our masked link now, right? I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste it here. And there you go. Okay, so I said, we said we're going to do this on intelligent exit. So when I come, I'm not even going to try to close this particular tab. I'm going to just go here somewhere. Boom, this thing came up, okay? So there you go. So this page isn't even mine, guys. Suppose I'm an affiliate, suppose I'm trying to, um, that's an interesting pop-up. Do, do you see that? It's about dog trainers and they're giving me a pop-up about losing weight. So there you go. Okay, that's where they got this. I'm pretty sure these dog trainers didn't create a pop-up themselves. So what you saw right there, actually, when someone created a pop-up about losing weight, that was probably someone else already working on this site, okay? Uh, so basically, if a site does not allow cloaking, the only thing you're going to see, the only difference is that the pop-up will show up but the page will not load because it did not allow cloak link. So the page will not load, the pop-up will show up, but then it's kind of useless, right? So make sure to test it out. And the best way to test it out is also don't click preview, just actually copy the link, paste the link, okay? So that's about it. Um, I think it's a really useful feature, allows you to gather information even though the site is not yours. 
And also as a secondary reason, if you want to add a secondary pop-up, like on ClickFunnels, you can only really work on one. Uh, you can add, well, you can work on one within their system, right? Without going to add-ons and such. Um, but here you can you can do more than that and you can create several pop-ups with maybe different offers. You can create this pop-up here for signing up and then this pop-up here, hey, gather your free book, whatever, okay? So I hope that helped. If you guys have questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. Please subscribe. For those of you that have subscribed, I do appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next video.